All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Quentin. So tonight I'm going to talk about testing, right? Because we're all of testing. Um, so I'm a software engineer at Nielsen. And at Nielsen, we're pretty much hiring quite often. So data science, software development, or DevOps. So a few buzzwords. Um, we do lots of Kubernetes. Uh, horizontal pod auto-scaling, auto-scaling, like that's some pretty cool stuff. Uh, we play with Spark a lot. How many people are familiar with Spark? Right, so in Spark, applications run in what we call executors. So they're like those little processes. And Spark provides dynamic scaling for this, but then you have Spark workers, and we dynamically scale them, and then we also scale the VMs, so you kind of like and pretty much scale indefinitely, so that's pretty cool. Um, so Python, obviously, and then we uh, deploy Kubernetes on Azure soon, AWS. And Airflow is a pretty cool open source project. You should check it out. All right. So I hope everybody can see this even there. Um, so basically, what this says is that uh, software engineers are usually pretty confident people, right? Uh, not always smart, but hopefully we are, I think, from time to time. So, <laughs> testing. Um, I'm going to start with the context, why this talk. Um, I'm going to talk about mid end, so man in the middle. How many of you guys are familiar with that concept? Cool. So, all right, so I, I hate mocking, right? And I feel like I'm wasting way too much time when I do that, and I make human mistakes, right? So I wanted to find a way to automate that. So that's where money in the middle is going to help us. Uh, I'm going to say what I like about it. I'm going to try a live demo. Uh, project is on GitHub from last night. And then Q&A. Um, so hopefully we'll have lots of comments and questions, because uh, I think usually software developers have very strong opinions about testing and the way that it should be done. So that should be interesting. All right, so how it started. Um, I had this ticket a month or two ago. Uh, I was supposed to update a client idea, so a Python library. Right? Uh, that Python, Python library was talking to uh, already existing HTTP service. And as it happens quite often, I didn't have much time to finish the ticket because I like messing around with the code and trying to refactor stuff continuously. Um, so, I had uh, several requirements, uh, multiple de data types that my client should handle, um, permissions, uh, the HTTP service was kind of the bookkeeping service, um, so multiple use cases, which means multiple mocks, and I, for me it's way too much mocking, but I don't like that, so I was thinking, okay, there should be a way to automate that. Um, so if you Google about uh, mocking HTTP responses, uh, you're going to find lots, lots of uh, like, uh, GitHub projects, uh, talks, articles about uh, using monkey patch and patching, right? That's the classic way. Um, if you're, depends on the company you're working with, but sometimes you will have swagger definitions of your service, so you can use that. Right, it has a really cool feature to mock. Well, uh, we don't do that at my company. So then there is this really cool project, uh, Python Responses. So really quickly, Python Responses is, I think, pretty nice. Uh, Can you make the font bigger? Of course, yeah. Good code. All right, is that OK? Yeah, more or less. I'm, I'm going to read it anyway. So basically, you use a Python decorator in front of your test, and you have kind of this list of responses, kind of your list of mocks, and you just add there, well, I will do a HTTP get there on that URL, and the response that I expect is that. So I think it's pretty nice, um, easily maintainable, but still lots of work. I'm going to go back to my slide. So, okay. So that's about it. Um, so now what MITEM is. Uh, MITEM stands for man in the middle. Uh, 
So basically, it's a HTTP proxy. Uh, it's a proxy that you can use to intercept traffic. Right? So it's a concept that you guys may hear about uh, in like uh, cyber security uh, and things like that. So you can uh, basically catch up traffic for uh, HTTP, HTTPS, and probably some of you are familiar with TCP dump, right? So you can think of it as uh, TCP dump. And so the way that it works, so that's the official documentation, it provides a command line tool, a web interface, a Python API. So the way it works is that basically your client, okay. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit. More, more. A little bit more? Yes. All right, all right. Even more, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I keep going. All right. This is going to back. All right, so basically, as long as you see the phone, the yellow part, and then the server, you're good. Um, so the traffic usually goes from the client to the service. And the way that you can use meet and proxy, man in the middle is, well, basically in the middle of this traffic. So you can use man in the middle in different modes. So the one that I'm going to talk about is the transparent mode, the reverse proxy mode. So the client just does the same thing. It will just um, talk to the URL. Uh, it will provide the port and just try to query it. Meet and proxy will then capture this traffic and redirect it to the website. So that's basically it. Um, so I thought, all right, maybe I can use that to mock my service. So I'm going to start the demo. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the advantages of meet and proxy. All right, so I'm going to have to use my terminal. So you guys probably won't see me. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in a little bit. very um, basic service, right? Because it's a hello world um, test. So I have a very basic service, right? And this is running on 88. Um, now, I'm going to start, I'm going to start, um, this is not the way forward. I'm going to start the proxy. listening to localhost 8080, right? So basically my service, my proxy, man in the middle, is listening in front of this. And so remember, the idea behind this is to create mocks, right? So you have different ways that you can do this. You can use Postman, you can use Google Chrome, and you can just hit your web service. And this guy here is going to just capture everything. Um, 
personally, the way I did it is through a series of curl commands. Right, so first I check that my service is healthy, then I have those basic endpoints that takes parameters, I do a post, I do gets, so I do a little bit of everything. I'm going to launch the queries. And uh, so, what happened here is that I just launched those call comments on remember, you need to look at the port. So, I launched them on the port of the proxy, right? Because my service is actually running on 8080, and I launched them on 8000. So, they were all received here, as you can see, uh, person, chippy. Uh, by GP, right? And then they are redirected to my actual service. And then the response is set back with the actual response, right? So, I think it's kind of cool. Um, so, basically that's it. You have mocked your service. Uh, all the mocks are created and there's nothing else to do. Um, another cool feature of Meet Proxy is replay. So basically what I'm going to do is that now I have my uh, mocks created and I'm just going to write my tests. So I'm going to zoom, don't worry. More, of course. All this more. So, unlike all the articles that you see online, I don't have any code about monkey patching or patches, and that makes me real happy. Um, so, here, basically, I'm going to test my hello service. I have two services, hello and bye. Um, so, basically, the first part is the parameter, and the second part is the response that I accept, right? So when I send Shibi to um, hello, I expect him to tell me hello Shibi. And then when I post a Shibi on by, I expect by Shibi. All right, so I'm using Docker Compose here. How many of you guys are familiar with Docker? All right, cool. So that's kind of like the buzzword for the last I don't know how many years. So everybody's using it, even if they don't need it, but it's just cool to use it. All right, so we're going to use it, because it's cool. And, uh, all right, so I have two things, basically. Uh, remember, here we're working on integration testing, right? And we don't want to write any mocks. So I'm going to have, for the people who are not familiar with Docker Composite, basically the idea is that um, you can think of it as VMs, but without the OS layer. So you have several components running and interacting together, right? Uh, Docker Compose is real nice because it allows you to handle the network configuration so that your containers can talk to each other. So I have just two services here. By test, right? Many of you mentioned it at the beginning of this talk. That's the one I'm using. And then I have my real service host here. So I'm using the Docker image from Meetup Proxy. I'm exposing the ports. Uh, this is just for debugging, but because uh, I briefly mentioned it, but uh, networking was already handled inside of the Docker Compose logic. So that means that this guy knows how to talk to this guy without exposing this to the host machine. Right. So that's the comment, right? Uh, Meetup is the Meet and dump is like the TCP dump, and I say, okay, well, I want some debugging. Um, I want you to act as a reverse proxy, and more important than anything, I want you to replay. And so, in the demo that I did before, when the server was running, it captures basically all the traffic and dumps it into a file. I call it test basis. Uh, we'll see later that we can inspect this file and look at the queries looks like. So basically, I say, hey. Take that file and replay it. And no pop means basically you replay it forever. Right? 
right? Because you can replay it in the order that you want or any order. I just I just want to play it in any order. Alright, so now is the real test. Um, I'm gonna run those tests and see if it's working. Alright, so I'm gonna shut down the services. Um, so here I have my test cases, right? Um, the actual traffic that I created is inside the mock service. Right? And now I'm gonna run my tests. So what uh, how do I run my test? It's this, right? Docker Composer, Docker Labs, and that's it. Make integration test. All right, so it's building an image. Hopefully, I have access to the network. Looks like I don't have access to the network.
share what you think of this practice. Do you think it's a bad practice, an anti-pattern, or a good pattern? So, yeah, um, I'm going to stop right here. Already talked about. Yeah, so I also don't like mocking. Why don't you like mocking? Um, so, because I feel like that's a good question that I'm going to repeat for everybody. Um, so he said, um, he, just like me, he doesn't like mocking. Uh, I get him a lot. Um, so why don't I like mocking? Um, so when I'm mocking, I feel like I'm not thinking too much, right? And I feel like it's a very repetitive task. And that's usually an indicator that I use to realize, well, Maybe there's a better way to do it. Always a better way. <laughs> we got tools. Right, exactly. Another question? All right. Um, so I'm going to close this with just that there are many more use cases that you can do with this. Right? I showed how to replay a service. You can replay a client. Um, what if I know at um, one of my friends had to rewrite the service. Well, he did to match the previous interface, right? So with that, I mock the previous interface and make sure it still works with my new interface, right? So many things you can do with that. Uh, faster integration, easy maintenance. It's kind of an upfront cost, right? I spent like, like two nights ago to stand up this thing, but then if I want to add more tests, it's just one more curl command and write a new test. All right, uh, thank you very much for listening.